talk, shop, pop, movies. Oh, hey there, this is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile, and if you're a Convicted Cinephile yourself, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. On my channel, I like to talk, shop, and pop open, that is, movies and physical media. And as we all know, it is Criterion Month, and I finally, after getting back from my uh, trip to California to visit the family, finally went out to Barnes & Noble a couple times, but I only got footage at one of them. And between those two stores, I got six movies, and I ordered one on Amazon that I'll also show you that did not come in yet, because as we all know, if you order anything on sale from Amazon, for some reason it takes six extra weeks to get to you. So let's just jump into the footage quick, and then I will show you what I picked up. So I've actually went to two different stores this week. Uh, my local one being always a solid store, but this one, which is honestly a similar distance to my house, I always forget how much bigger their selection is. The other store, the first one, has like one shelf on one side full of Criterions and then maybe an end cap. This one has, as you can see here, a decent amount of newer releases here. The Okja 4K is always tempting. This Scorsese Age of Innocence is always tempting, but they have quite a bit in this little area, even though a lot of them don't seem to be in any logical order. This All About, order. This All About Eve set is gorgeous, but I'm just waiting for that inevitable 4K before I pull that trigger. The original Nightmare Alley is tempting. Inside Lewin Davis, a Coen Brothers favorite. Solid, solid stuff, but as you can see, the non-criterions kind of start right there. I wish I liked Terrence Malick movies more because the New World set is gorgeous. I love this blob Blu-ray. I recommend that one to anybody. This Beatles Hard Day's Night is also very tempting. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous set. But I'm not a big enough Beatles fan to just splurge on a movie that I've never seen from them. Irishman is solid, if you're a Scorsese lover, as I always am. This one is great. The Celebration, it's a French New Wave film. I actually watched it in film school, so I recommend that one if you haven't seen it. And Miller's Crossing, as you see in the front here, is one of my favorite Coen Brothers films. Double Indemnity, the Blu-ray. Tons and tons and tons of Blu-rays. Hollywood Shuffle I've always been tempted by, and by always since it's been out for like a few months. Tons and tons of Blu-rays, I've noticed. I was not seeing a lot of 4Ks. Thelma and Louise Blu-ray is not nearly as fancy as the Thelma and Louise 4K, but we have some on the top here. This Infernal's Affair trilogy is tempting. The box is a little underwhelming, though. This is the first time I've seen it in person, and I thought it would be a little bit cooler than that. The Servant one is a newer release. Brazil, one of my all-time favorites, but if you already haven't gotten it, honestly, they're going to do a 4K from somebody at some point soon. There's the 4K blowout. I already have the Blu-ray, so I'm not going to splurge on that one today, but the 4K Wally is great. This Menace to Society set is fantastic. And little did I notice that just to the left of where I was standing, which is, you know, the same shelf I was already at, but there is a dedicated 4K area, so they have tons of copies of Raging Bull, Triangle of Sadness, which is one I went to go pick up today, the new Time Bandits, Thelma and Louise. Here's a couple ones just like sitting randomly for no reason. Days of Confuse up there though. These are all 4Ks as you can see for all mankind. And then here's where the Blu-ray section starts. Lost Highway is one I debated grabbing today, but I'm so hit or miss with David Lynch movies that I don't know if I want to risk it for that one. <laughs> we'll see though. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of cool stuff with the piano and Power of the Dog, some Jane Campion double feature criteria in there. Branded to Kill I've never seen, it's even more Triangle of Sadness. Wings of Desire is a fantastic film, I recommend watching that one. Fisher King, Time Bandits, and here's that big Thelma and Louise set. More of the same there. The gorgeous, if underwhelming, artwork, <laughs> Citizen Kane. And another Scorsese 4K that I've never seen, The Last Waltz. And if that wasn't tempting enough, you turn around and there's this other entire shelf right here. So we'll do a quick once over. This shelf seems to be dedicated to some of the bigger sets and also just some of the older releases. The first shelf I looked at seemed to be mostly newer stuff. This is the 
properly alphabetized section that they typically have, I believe. More here at the bottom. This is actually another shelf to the left of that one. You see the Beatles set there. Fast Times at Ridgemont High in 4K. Dazed and Confused. Bunch and bunch of stuff. There's the A's. I kind of went in reverse here. So there's the beginning of the shelf through the Big Chill. And right above that is their little tiny arrow section, which is only a couple rows deep. So as we saw there, not a shabby selection at that uh, location. The first location I went to, I got four of the five movies I was looking for. So it's a solid one, but they are always missing something. This location has about twice as much shelf space that I showed off. But enough about that. Let's get into what I actually grabbed. I'll say the first one first is the one I ordered from Amazon. One I didn't expect to grab, at least not yet, was the Fantastic Mr. Fox Blu-ray from Criterion. I only grabbed this one because I know I like the film enough. I watched it and it was pretty good from what I remember. And I know my son likes stop motion stuff, so he might get a kick out of it too. But that's not going to arrive until like the 25th for whatever reason, even though I bought it like the moment it went on sale. Because Amazon had it for $15 instead of the usual 20 And I mean, if you can get a Criterion for more than half off, you're going to do it. It doesn't even matter what it is at that point, right? But into what I got today slash a couple days ago. Actually, first of all, before I get into these, I want to mention that if you're not aware, Barnes & Noble has a, like, stamps thing, they call it or whatever, but it's like a point system, which if you're not an actual paid member for their annual thing, which is like 40 bucks a year, which is a good deal if you buy enough stuff from them, but if you're like me and you pretty much only buy stuff from them during the Criterion sales, not really worth it. Uh, but they started this point system where every however much money you get, you get X amount of points kind of thing that everyone seems to be doing these days. But that one's free, so I was like, what the hell, I'll sign up for it. And they happen to be doing double points this week, so I bought four Criterions the first day, and those four got me $10 in rewards right off the bat, so I was able to put that towards what I bought today at the other store. So it almost worked out in my favor that they didn't have what I wanted because I was able to get $10 off the next movie I wanted to grab. So FYI, if you're not aware, they have a thing, a rewards thing at Barnes & Noble, so... Get on that. You know, go to their website. They know more about it than me. But into the actual movies, most of them are 4Ks. All but one, actually, because I don't typically buy the Blu-rays anymore because they get re-released on 4K so frequently. But if it's a newer Blu-ray, I'm slightly less worried. So let's get into this from most obvious to probably most surprising. I grabbed the new release of essentially the week, <laughs> After Hours, by Martin Scorsese, which I've never seen. It looks awesome. And by looks, I mean, from what I've heard, I actually haven't seen a trailer or anything for this movie, but I kind of don't want to at this point. But it's got the, uh, what can I remember? Never think of his name when I want to. Jesus Christ. Griffin Dunn. There we go. From American Werewolf in London. He's awesome. I like him in everything I've seen him in. So I'm excited to see that one. And it's a short one, too. It's like, what, 97 minutes long. And it came out the year I was born. Maybe I'll have a new favorite movie from the year I was born. I doubt it. But it could be up there. Next, I have the other one everyone else bought. The Thelma and Louise 4K set. So, like I said briefly before, if you have not seen them in person, this one is, you know, a nice thick boy in a cardboard sleeve. Digipack, which I prefer. I like the Digipacks. A lot of people don't like that they're in different packaging because they like them to look uniform. I sort of am a fan that some of them are different than others because it's, it's about the movies, you know, right? It's about the movie, not so much the packaging. So if it's a great movie and the box happens to be a different shape, I don't care. I've got DVDs in my Criterion shelf and Blu-rays and slip covers and digibook things. Like, they're all different. <laughs> it's like, why, why bother caring now if you've been buying these things for upwards of 30 years? Because that's how long they've been around. More so than that. I actually did a video about the uh, history of the Criterion collection last year. I might actually link that in this video because I honestly forgot I did it until yesterday. It just popped in my head. Maybe I'll watch it. But you might learn something. I go over their packaging and the history of the company. It's kind of cool. So look at that one, too. But yeah, Thelma and Louise. I kind of want to open this. I'm going to open this so we can all look at it. Okay, got the plastic off. So the 4K Thelma and Louise set. Nice little slippity dips here. I, I almost said, hey, I want to buy this. Not because I've heard great things and I've never seen the film. But because I like to try to collect Best Picture nominees. And then I remembered, oh yeah, this wasn't nominated for Best Picture. It was just nominated for like everything else, including Best Director and both actresses and so on and so forth. So it's a almost Best Picture nominee. 
probably should have been, if you know, in hindsight. So you got the three discs in here, hence the fatter packaging. You got the 4K disc, the Blu-ray disc, and a second Blu-ray disc, which I assume is special features. But that's cool artwork on that. So nice big panoramic view. And then inside is the uh, the booklet that they always come with. Got a little screenplay page on the front. Behind the scenes stuff about the actresses. I'm actually excited for this because it's one of those movies that like everyone's seen except for me for some reason. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing Thelma and Louise for the first time finally 30 years too late. Slide this back in here. This one is, oh, I forgot to do the, uh, the spine number is 1185 is after hours. And this one came out just before it, it is 1180. Thelma and Louise, very cool artwork. I actually thought this was a photo until I like someone told me otherwise. And then I just looked closer at it and it is an actual, like it is artwork. This is the one I wanted to get that the first store didn't have. This is a best picture nominee from last year. Triangle of Sadness on 4K. This movie is interesting, to say the least. I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's a long one. It's almost two and a half hours. This is by number 1178, so like you can even see that. Came out right before these other two ones I just talked about. It's an interesting film. It's a, an Eat the Rich style film. I don't want to spoil too much. The first act of it is longer than it needs to be, is my biggest complaint. But the second and third acts are very, very interesting. And the whole movie is pretty funny throughout. And the, uh, the reference of the grenade in the cover will make sense when you see the movie. And it's, it's pretty funny. The last two 4Ks I have are... This one I'm excited. Because it's one of the Blu-rays slash DVDs I just never got. Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits. You know, you lovely lenticular slip cover. Criterion does not do slip covers or lenticulars ever. So the fact that this got both of those is very cool. So I definitely wanted to grab it for that. And I just wanted to get the movie anyway, because <laughs> I've been wanting to watch it again. This is an old release. This is number 37 in the Criterion collection. This is an OG release. It's got a laser disc, I'm sure, and everything. Because the first, there was 300 or so laser discs from Criterion. But then I think when they started the DVDs, they reset the numbers. So as far as the DVD goes, this is number 37. And then the other one is similar. It is The Fisher King, another Terry Gilliam film, one I've never seen that I've wanted to, Oscar winning slash nominated film for many a folk, Robin Williams included for lead actor. Yeah, I love Robin Williams, who doesn't? I love Jeff Bridges, who doesn't? And I like Terry Gilliam movies a lot usually. And I love that he's from Minnesota, yet he's a member of Monty Python. So <laughs> I'm very excited to see this for the first time. The Fisher King. Last but not least, this is the one I didn't plan on buying, but I was just interested enough to be like, screw it, I'll get it. And that is Robert Townsend's The Hollywood Shuffle. I did a video about uh, the Waynes brothers <laughs> last summer, and Keenan Ivory Waynes was involved with this. I believe he's a co-writer along with Robert Townsend. So it's very much like a sort of a sketch comedy-esque movie, and I'm a fan of Robert Townsend. I like him. I love Meteor Man. <laughs> oddly enough, which is like the movie he did after this. Not quite as revered as Hollywood Shuffle, I must say. But it's one I was just tempted enough to be like, screw it, I'm gonna get it. Like I said, it's a Blu-ray, so I don't get those very often, but it's such a new release, number 1173, that I said, what the hell, I doubt they'll put this on 4K, and if they do, I just won't buy it. It's not like it's a movie I need to have on every single format. Another short one, 81 minutes. I forgot if I said what spy number this is. 764. Fisher King is also an older one that they have updated. 4k so yeah hollywood shuffle from meteor man himself robert townsend so those are the six slash seven including the fantastic mr fox blu-ray i ordered criterion releases i got this time around i'm not going to get any more than this this is already more than i planned on buying i was planning on getting just these five and then i ended up getting fantastic mr fox because it was too cheap to pass up and this one because of my interest peaked too much and plus it's nice to have another comedy on the Criterion Collection. You don't get a ton of those, especially ones like this. So thank you for watching. Go out, buy some Criterions while they're still cheap. Rack up those, I almost said Ben and Jerry's points. Barnes and Noble points. <laughs> ben and Jerry's points, that would be good too. 
I could go for some ice cream. And get yourself some discounted Criterion. So I was able to get Triangle of Sadness today for 15 bucks because of those 10 free dollars I got from the other four from a couple days ago. Once again, my name is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. Thank you for watching, and go watch my Criterion History video I'm going to post, and hopefully not forget about it. And I'll see you next time. Fuck. Shop. Pop. Movies.